Lori Michelle Mashiach here with commentary about my meeting with Andrew. This commentary is about someone ordinary, like I used to be, who stepped up in a moment and decided to be extraordinary. He is someone who reached out to me after he went online and bought my book, The Torah Part Two, Blindsided by Messiah. And he was taken by my book. He believes me. He believes I'm telling the truth. And he had questions. So he contacted me and asked me questions and for my guidance and help. And wow, that was wonderful. Thank you, Andrew. And if this video makes it on YouTube and social media, it's because you agreed to allow me to share it so I could help other people because undoubtedly when you read my book, you're going to have questions and many of you will have the same questions. So my help for you, Andrew, will help other people. So I'm going to recap our discussion where you asked me several questions and I'm going to pick the top two, the top two questions that you had on your mind that I hopefully helped you with. And today I hope to help you even further and go deeper. Your first question was about what a Noahide could do to grow in his or her relationship with Hashem, God. And we spoke about the Noahide laws on our call. And I want to go deeper with that conversation with you right now because it's important. In my book, I share the Noahide laws on, uh, on what page was it? Let me look. 380, page 380, I share them. And my comment or commentary to you is let's not get bogged down with the details. Let's go for the cure. What's the cure? The cure is focus on rule number one, which is the same rule, rule number one, for the Noahides as it is for the Jewish people, which is the same as it is for everyone. It's even the same rule if you are an alcoholic and you go through the 12-step program, which is the first rule, there's a higher power. The first rule in the Noahide laws is there's God in this world. And my contention and my belief, and Hashem just said, and you know, that if you have full faith in God, that he's real and he's watching you, the rest of the rules are going to flow. The rest of your life is going to flow from rule number one. So focus on rule number one. That's my strongest advice for everyone. God is everything and everything else is extra and he's real. He's right here with me. I'm telling the truth and thank you, Andrew, for knowing and feeling my truthfulness, but not only knowing and feeling my truthfulness, reading my book and connecting the dots that I'm telling the truth. And so from rule number one, God is real and he's watching your every move. Act like it, behave like it, choose in every moment like he's watching you and listening to you because I assure you, he is. He's everywhere. He's with me 24-7. He's doing this with me right now. I am telling you the truth. I am one with Hashem, our creator. I eat, sleep, breathe, and do everything with Hashem. But he's everywhere. He's with you right now. Whoever you are and Andrew, he's with you. He's listening to you. He's listening to every utterance out of your mouth. Everything you say counts. And these are the end of days and he's watching everything and he's making his list and checking it twice to see who's following his ways, his laws, and who's not. So focus on rule number one and you slipped in our conversation, maybe. Maybe it was a slip. You said you smoke. 
no good. In Hebrew, we call that low besetter, not okay. You have to quit. So I'm gonna put my boxing gloves on and smack you in the head. And I'm saying this with complete compassion to you, Andrew, because I was a smoker back in the day. I was so hooked. I smoked a pack and a half a day when I was around 25, 26 years old. And my biggest advice regarding quitting smoking is it's evil, it's horrible, you're shortening your life and you don't want to do that, especially in the face of God himself. And he's watching you, remember? Rule number one. So every time you think about smoking another cigarette, take one out, tear it up to pieces and say, thank you Hashem for my health, Please help me quit this horrible habit because smoking is taking away your health. It's supporting something very evil. It's supporting the tobacco companies who are putting out a carcinogen, an evil drug that people are hooked on. And so you're supporting financially an evil that's killing people and you're killing yourself. You've got to quit cold turkey. I did it. It can be done. The first thing you have to do is lick and quit the physical addiction that needs to leave you. And that leaves in about a week or two. After that, it's all psychological. So reach for Hashem 24 seven, replace that evil habit with something good, like get down and do 10 pushups instead of smoking a cigarette. Go for a walk instead of smoking a cigarette. Call your wife, tell her how much you love her instead of smoking a cigarette. Replace that evil habit with something good and of God. And always remember rule number one, he's watching you, so it's like you're smoking in his face. And he said, it's not like, it is, you are, he's watching you, so do it. And the other question that you had was about depression and anxiety. How do we cure it? And I've done programs, Running on Love with God programs about depression and anxiety. And yet again, I can totally commiserate with people who have been depressed to the point of being suicidal. I explained to you in our conversation that when I was awakened, it was so awful. My life was ripped from me. I became so depressed. I used to pray to God to give me cancer and get me out of here because at least if I died, then my kids would have the million dollar life insurance policy. I felt that my life was worthless and that I was worth more dead than alive. I'm telling the truth. Mashiach was that depressed. It was so hard to pull the covers down and get out of bed in the morning. But what I also had was my full amona, full faith in God. And I reached for him every second. I was crying. Yes, I was depressed. But he soothed me. He motivated me. He helped me get out of bed. He's real pray all the time. In the morning, when you wake up, the minute you open your eyes in the morning, say, thank you, Hashem, for having faith in me and giving me another day to bring godliness into this world, because that's your purpose. You are a spark of God that needs to burn like a flame. We have to stop sparking like God, and then in the next minute, choosing evil, like smoking a cigarette. Sorry to bash you in the head about the cigarettes, but you've got to quit. You know you have to quit. It's pure evil. There's nothing good about smoking cigarettes. And there's no excuse now. Now that you know he's watching you in every single moment, you've got to quit. And when you wake up, thank him. Thank him every moment of every day. And that will heal you from the inside out. Gratitude is one of the most powerful emotions that we could possibly have. Gratitude to God is an imperative. He gives us 
everything. So every time you drink a sip of water, it looks like it's invisible, but it's really here. Thank you, Hashem, for bringing everything into this world. Every time you eat something, thank you, Hashem, for what I just ate. Thank him before you eat it. Before you eat, thank you. After you eat, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Become incessantly grateful. And then I'm going to also tell you that you need to be brave. Right now, our world is so deeply evil. We're surrounded in evil, and most people don't even realize. God talks to you. He talks to me, but you don't hear him like I do. But there's also evil voices, silent ones, surrounding everyone, and they take all the voices. It becomes encapsulated into one voice, the voice of Andrew, the voice of Lori, and that's how you hear it. And you need to discern in every moment, what am I listening to? Because your voice is picking up on the energy that's surrounding you. You need to discern in every moment, is this a depressing idea? Is this idea giving me anxiety? Because if it's depressing you, if it's making you anxious, it's Yetzahara. It's the evil inclination dragging you away pulling you away from the good inclination, the inclination to choose who you really are, a spark of God. So grab on to him. He's got the broadest shoulders in the universe, and that's the way you lick depression. I get sad, and I do get anxious, but what do I do? Mashiach? Hashem! And so I could still smile, and I go running, I exercise, very important. Be active, be loving, and reach for him. He's there, I'm telling the truth, and start looking for those God winks. But be brave, because this world is deeply evil, and the more you sparkle God, guess what's going to happen? He's going to notice, but so is the Yetzirah surrounding you, People are going to trash you. What are you doing? Why are you reading her book? She's false. She's a faker. She's crazy. You're crazy. Calling someone crazy is the easiest way to dismiss them. You're crazy. You don't have to listen then, right? But I'm not crazy, and you're not crazy, and depression has a source, and the cure is Hashem, the king of the universe. And he is, wow! <laughs> he is, wow! I'm telling the truth. My hope and prayer is that this helps you, it heals you from the inside out, and you'll be eager to share this information with other people. Just share it, just share this video, share the book, share what I'm saying, because it's all for you. He's for you. I'm for you. We have to be for each other. We need to be warriors for God and goodness because the evil in this world is putrid and it's stronger than godliness right now. And godliness needs to win so we can redeem our world, build that third holy temple on Temple Mount, Build Hashem a dwelling place in Jerusalem and bring world peace in our time. So be a warrior, Andrew, and quit smoking right now. Now. I love you. Thank you. God bless you. World peace in our time. God bless you.